Have you ever questioned the reality of your own existence? Hundreds of years ago, a man named Descartes did. He proposed a thought experiment, a devilish one, if you will, that has since been a source of endless debate. Imagine an evil devil, powerful and intelligent, whose sole aim is to deceive you. This devil is a master illusionist, manipulating your senses to make you believe you're seeing a complete external world. But the twist is, this world does not exist. Even your own body is a part of this grand illusion. Descartes tried to make sense of this existential quandary with his famous quote, I think therefore I am. His argument was that no matter how the devil deceives you, your very existence as a thinking subject must be real. But the question remains, is our perception of the external world merely an illusion? The question of reality and illusion has sparked debates among philosophers, theologians and even physicists. For centuries, illusion and reality have been a battleground in the realm of philosophy and theology. Thinkers like Descartes have proposed thought experiments involving powerful entities deceiving us into believing an illusory world is real. But what happens when physics steps onto this philosophical battlefield? Enter the Boltzmann brain, a self-aware entity that arises due to the random fluctuations out of a state of chaos. This theoretical brain is the physics counterpart to Descartes' deceiving devil, a modern twist to the age-old philosophical dilemma. This notion finds echoes in cultural references too. Zhuangzhou's Dream Butterfly, a Chinese parable, questions the distinction between dreams and reality. The film Inception takes this a step further, blurring the line between reality and dreams to an indistinguishable extent. When physics intervenes in this age-old debate, the line between reality and illusion becomes even more blurred. Our senses play a crucial role in how we perceive reality. All that we experience, everything we see, hear, touch, taste and smell is processed through our five human senses. These senses are our gateways to the world, serving as a conduit for information that shapes our understanding and interpretation of reality. Even abstract concepts such as economic principles or social rules are shaped by the information absorbed through our senses. Take, for instance, understanding a person's personality without seeing their expressions or hearing their words. How could we form an accurate picture? Similarly, how could we comprehend social norms without observing and interacting with others? This brings us to an intriguing question. Can the brain think without senses? Logically, the answer seems to be no. Our thoughts, after all, are fueled by sensory information. While we may never fully understand the fine line between reality and illusion, one thing is certain, our senses and the information they feed our brains play a crucial role in shaping our perception of the world. Imagine for a moment the vast spectrum of consciousness. It's a subjective experience, a framework constructed by our human minds. We perceive, we feel, we understand all within the confines of our human experiences. But what if we could break free from these limitations? What if we could explore consciousness from the perspective of an alien or a supercomputer? Imagine if we could understand the consciousness of an alien life form. What would we find? Consciousness, as we understand it, is deeply rooted in our human experiences. Yet an alien life form with possibly different sensory organs and cognitive processes could perceive reality in ways fundamentally different from ours. Their normal might be our extraordinary. Consider the vast diversity of life on Earth itself. The world of bat experiences, seeing through echolocation, is drastically different from the colorful panorama we humans enjoy. Now amplify this difference a thousandfold, and you might just begin to grasp the alien consciousness. While this thought experiment is speculative, it is not without merit. It challenges us to rethink our definitions and understanding of consciousness. It compels us to question, are our perceptions the only valid interpretations of reality? As we ponder about alien consciousness, it becomes clear that our understanding of reality is deeply intertwined with our consciousness. Let's turn our attention to dreams, a realm where our consciousness takes us on surreal journeys every night. Each night our mind weaves narratives, constructs worlds and plays out scenarios that, while we're in them, feel as real as anything we experience in our waking life. Dreams can be so vivid, so tangible, that upon waking, we might find ourselves questioning whether what we just experienced was a figment of our imagination or a different reality. This fascinating interplay of consciousness and dreams blurs the line between what we consider real and unreal, between the dream world and our waking reality. 
This brings us to question, is our waking reality merely another form of dream? In an era where technology is progressing at an unprecedented rate, could consciousness exist in a supercomputer? The concept of artificial consciousness isn't new, it's been the subject of science fiction for decades. However, as we advance in technology, it becomes less fiction and more of a reality. Could a supercomputer, with its vast processing power and intricate algorithms, possess a form of consciousness? This question stirs debate among scientists and ethicists alike. It's a complex topic, intertwining technology, philosophy and ethics. The potential implications are vast, ranging from revolutionizing our understanding of consciousness to challenging our definition of life itself. Whether it's an alien brain, a dream state or a supercomputer, each scenario pushes us to widen our understanding of consciousness and reality. Six. The universe, from the grandeur of galaxies to the minuscule atoms, seems to be in a state of equilibrium, a balance between chaos and order. This equilibrium is governed by the laws of thermodynamics. The first law, often referred to as the law of energy conservation, suggests that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed. The second law introduces us to this concept of entropy, a measure of disorder. It states that in an isolated system, entropy tends to increase, leading to a gradual progression from order to disorder. But look around, we see stars forming, planets orbiting, life evolving, processes that seemingly contradict this law. How is it possible? The answer lies in the subtle interplay between these laws, a balancing act of cosmic proportions. So, we see that the universe isn't just a random jumble of matter, but a complex system governed by laws that dictate the balance of order and disorder. But what about life? How did something so complex and organized emerge from the chaos of the universe? Let's take a moment to ponder upon evolution, the grand journey from inorganic matter to organic matter, which at first glance seems to outright violate the laws of thermodynamics. It's a process that challenges our understanding of order and chaos. This is where the concept of entropy reduction comes into play. It's a remarkable phenomenon that allows atoms and molecules, which once existed in a highly disordered state, to combine into complex life forms. Imagine for a moment the sheer number of coincidences that had to occur for life as we know it to exist. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? Yet the process took billions of years, proving that given enough time, disorder can indeed morph into order. Life, then, is a testament to the universe's capacity for order, even in the midst of chaos. But here's a cosmic conundrum. Why is the distribution of matter in our universe so uneven? According to the Big Bang model, our universe sprung forth from a single point some 13.82 billion years ago. In theory, this should have resulted in a high entropy state with matter and energy spread evenly throughout. Yet what we observe is quite the contrary. Matter is unevenly distributed and cosmic voids like the one in the Eridanus constellation span over 10 light years. This suggests a surprisingly low entropy state. Could it be that our universe, in its high entropy state, began to fluctuate on a large scale? Could these fluctuations have given rise to the uneven spread of matter we see today? These questions challenge our understanding of the universe and its nature. This leaves us with a tantalizing mystery. How did our universe, born from the Big Bang, end up in such a low entropy state? The answer may lie in the very nature of the universe itself, a complex dance of order and disorder, a testament to the cosmic balance that governs all. This enigma of existence might be less of a mystery than we think. Picture a cosmic dance of microscopic particles colliding randomly over vast stretches of time. These collisions, given enough time, inevitably form states of low damage and high order. Celestial bodies, stars, planets, even our own brains could be the result of such processes. We, and everything we know, might just be products of this cosmic randomness. Imagine a universe where random fluctuations can give birth to brains, known as Boltzmann brains. This concept is as fascinating as it is mind-boggling. In the Boltzmann brain theory, the universe is seen as an infinite playground of microscopic particles colliding randomly. Out of this chaos, every now and then, an arrangement of particles might accidentally form a brain. 
These spontaneously formed brains are what we call Boltzmann brains. These brains could exist momentarily, appearing and disappearing with the randomness of the universe, yet some, through continuous fluctuations, might persist, rising and falling, yet always returning to a state of low damage. This low damage state is a highly ordered one, a state that allows for the existence of complex structures like celestial bodies and brains. Our ability to think, to ponder the mysteries of existence, might just be a product of this low damage state. As Boltzmann brains, we could be the result of countless fluctuations, each time returning to a low damage state that allows us to continue our train of thought. So in this vast, chaotic universe, amidst an infinite number of momentary Boltzmann brains that flicker in and out of existence, we might just be the ones that got lucky. We could be among the Boltzmann brains that continuously maintain a low damage state, allowing us to think and exist. Now, what are the odds of these Boltzmann brains existing? Scientists have crunched the numbers and the results are mind-boggling. They suggest that our universe being influenced by fluctuations is 72 orders of magnitude more probable than the existence of a Boltzmann brain. Yet given the vastness of the cosmos, this still leaves room for an astronomical number of these peculiar brains. Imagine a number so large it's hard to comprehend. We're talking about 7.5 billion multiplied by 10 to the power of 72. And these are just the continuous Boltzmann brains. There are even more that exist for only a fleeting moment, too transient to count. Though it's a fascinating theory, we must remember it's a thought experiment. Our understanding of cosmology and quantum gravity theory is still shallow, and it's possible that the entire Boltzmann theory might not hold water, but at least now, you can sleep well knowing you're unlikely to be a Boltzmann brain in the void. So, what have we learned today? We've delved into the randomness of the universe, the intriguing concept of Boltzmann brains, and the probabilities of their existence. Remember, the universe is a vast, fascinating place, full of mysteries yet to be unraveled. Keep questioning, keep exploring.